We're the Con Guys, and this is the Con Guy Show, coming to you straight from the nerdy heart of Hollywood, California. And this is Jim with theconguy.com. She's been here with theconguy.com. Katie here, aka the Con Girl. Zordon did not want five teenagers with attitude. My name is Derek Sam. I'm Danae Sams, and that's my brother. We are your home for news, opinions, and interviews from the world of Comic Cons and fandoms, your ultimate insiders for all things. Oh, the music stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Con Guy Show where we here as filmmakers and people working in the entertainment industry break down the most popular bits and pieces of pop culture, and we discuss our favorite comic book conventions, uh, such as the San Diego uh, Comic Book Exposition uh, every year, <laughs> uh, colloquial known as San Diego Comic Con. Blood good! Sorry, I missed that. I was doing an intro, Jim. Uh, <laughs> So we discuss our favorite comic con, comic cons, films, television shows, collectibles, fandoms, etc., etc., etc. Today I am joined by the con guy himself, Jim Fry, who will be dipping out shortly. I, I think is that right, Jim? Well, um, we don't want you here. I'm, I'm <laughs> holding. I'm holding court until Cheeseman gets back on that couch, and it, it should be very soon. Cheeseman's running late. As per the huge, as always. But tonight we also have a very special guest, friend of the show. You've seen him on here before, Mr. Jake Jerily, Jerily, Jerily. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I sound drunk when I'm trying to say his name, but I assure you, this is good old American A and W root beer. A and W root beer, it's good. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> anyway, Jake, welcome to the show. Tell us, uh, tell us where we can find you online if anybody wants to follow you. Hey guys. Thanks for having me back on the show. You can find me on Instagram at the Jacoba system. Always happy to be a part of the show and talk about my favorite hobby, cool toys and collectibles and conventions and all kinds of nerdy stuff. All right. Awesome. And uh, I am being told that our first special guest of the night, this is not Cheeseman. This is not Cheeseman. Cheeseman is running late and we're going to let him know that when he gets here. But we do have a special guest tonight. Friend of the show, he's been on before. The incomparable, the amazing, the unbelievable Tony Kim from Hero <laughs> Within. Tony, welcome to the show, man. Hey, incomparable. I don't think I've been described as incomparable. I need to Google what that even means. But <laughs> well, you truly are incomparable. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Tony, <laughs> what's going on, man? It's been a hot minute. The last time I saw Tony in person, I believe, was in las vegas at the star wars convention is that right tony or no i thought when did i see you was wait that the last time or... the start star trek convention or the star trek convention my fault. yeah yeah in vegas, that's time. right yeah yes that's right back in last august yeah august i think it was late august. yeah yeah that's right yeah so yeah, yeah so you've done crazy. anything since then <laughs> oh you know a little this a little that but yeah it's been really good uh, you know, the, the con season for us is kind of getting off to a late start. We, we typically are already done like Emerald City and, you know, a couple other shows. But we've uh, really WonderCon is kind of the beginning of the con season for us. So, so yeah, it's been good, look, you know, quiet and just kind of preparing and trying to stay cold and or uh, warm and dry, which has been tough here in Southern California. But, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, well, it has been it has been pretty wet and rainy recently, but yeah. um, we're out of the drought. We're out of the drought, everybody. <laughs> they lifted all the water restrictions. <laughs> That's what uh, seventy two feet of snow will do for you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty I've much. been running my lawn sprinklers like twenty four seven for like days now, just because we're out of the drought. So. <laughs> because why not? We yeah. can. I'm in Ohio, so weather doesn't make sense here. One day it's nice and sunny, then I go outside, it's snowing, then it stops snowing, and then it's. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from I'm from Kansas originally. That's the exact same way there. Um, but Tony, I'm so glad you brought up WonderCon because yeah. I failed to mention at the top of the show that this is our special WonderCon collectibles, exclusives, and stuff you can buy show. Yeah. Uh, we're really looking forward to WonderCon in Anaheim, California, this coming weekend. Uh, Tony, 
tell us uh, tell us what uh, you're going to be doing at WonderCon this year. Yeah, so um, the for here within, for those who are not familiar with it, we do subtle and sophisticated uh, geek apparel for fans, and um, Star Trek is our focus during this season. And we are we first introduced our Star Trek interactive experience at San Diego Comic Con last July, and it's making its debut at WonderCon for the first time this year. So super excited about that. And basically, what that means is that fans get a chance to come in and, and basically imagine like build a bear, but for jackets. And so you get to pick out your jacket shell. And then there's all kinds of different adornments, which is like patches and pins and pulls and all kinds of basic, you know, cool accessories that you basically can craft your own custom Star Trek exclusive um, for yourself. And so, uh, so that experience, we're going to be at booth 918. We're exclusively doing Star Trek this year, which we're really excited for. And um, we've got all kinds of new items, but particularly for this show, um, I mean, we're talking about for the con guy, um, we haven't revealed any of our uh, exclusives. And so I thought if you guys are down, I could show off a couple of things that we're going to have. Um, no, exclusive. I don't think. No, no, just pass it up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that. time. So. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh unfortunately i don't have any of the large product merch um, available as far as uh the digital um assets just yet so those will kind of come out later in the week but we're just um uh i don't know if um if jim mentioned it but i like i tweaked my back a couple no. of days ago yeah so yeah, i didn't mention I, that but uh, yeah so I, i'm I feeling, feeling better my friend yeah, I'm feeling fine, but if you ask me to get up, it'll take me about 90 seconds to stand up from this chair. So I just can't. I'm stuck. Um, so anyway, but just because of the personal issues, whatever, we're a little bit behind on developing some, or uh, releasing some of our digital assets. But I did want to show you I have a few things. Um, so as a result of this intera interactive experience, there's all kind. We have all different kinds of patches and um, shoulder patches and chest patches and all kinds of things. And so for the uh, for this show, we'll have five new uh, patches. And so I got four of them here right now. Uh, nice. Our first one is our our USS Defiant patch. Actually right there. Yeah. Very cool. And yeah. And our Those next DS9 one. DS9 fans. Yeah, DS9 fans. And then for our classic Enterprise fans, we have our USS Enterprise patch. Nice. Which up, up this point, we've not had a USS Enterprise patch. We've just done ba uh, the basic... Um, departments for star trek like command and operations and engineering and all that so we're now that this now that this interactive interactive experience has been traveling a little bit for different shows we now have a chance to sort of drill down into some of the more specific um fandom and so and then this is really cool it's our, it's our united federation patch oh i love that so, you know yeah just kind of the this is like the modern crest that came out of uh, Strange New Worlds. And so this is like the, the modern depiction of the United Federation of Planets. And then uh, this is going to be fun for for Lower Deck fans. Yes. We've got the California class starship, which is the, <laughs> uh, so you can see the the ship. And this is the, because it's California class, it actually has the California flag on it. So, That's so yeah, cool. so this That's is a party cool. for your lower deck fans and then we have another patch i actually realized i didn't have it with me but it's a it's a um uh it's a convention exclusive of just the convention itself so it's like um here within and anaheim convention center it's basically like a um a patch exclusive to um wondercon itself so check that out Awesome. And then uh, a couple other things I have, or at least one other thing is that, so one of the things that we offer are, um, you know, our Delta pins. And so uh, we've had in the past, we've had the, the classic uh, Strange New Worlds um, metal pin. We've had Next I Generation. I haven't seen that. that. Tony, hold it back yeah. up. I've not seen that before. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, a, it's just a pin to add again, to add to your jacket. And nice. uh, we've had the... Um, DS9 Voyager pin. We've had the uh, Next Generation. We've had the Rank Pips. And so for this show, we're coming out with um, uh, Star Trek Picard. So we've got the Picard Delta. Nice. And I actually realized I grabbed the... So we have two different versions of the Picard Delta. And I realized I grabbed the wrong one. But this is the... So the, 
the Bacard Delta is silver on slate gray. And so uh -huh. we'll have the, the, the more of the show accurate one, but we're also offering a convention exclusive version that has uh, the gold trim on it as well. And nice. so you can get one that looks more like the show. You can get one that's a little bit more for the WonderCon exclusive, which is the um, slate gray, or I'm um, sorry, the gold trimmed um, Delta. Very cool. Yeah. And then a few other things that we're offering is um, we've got three new pre-orders that you'll be able to see at the show. One is a uh, crop top, uh, Star Trek crop top, and uh, that comes in the classic three colors, the, the maroon, mustard, and the navy. And then we'll also have a new denim jacket and um, a Picard, Star Trek Picard jacket. It's already, that's already in production, but it hasn't arrived yet, but you can order that jacket as well. So, um, and then on top of that, we have like uh, everything like, like Ben's wearing. We'll have all of our bombers, our hoodies, our Strange New World jackets, our tactical jackets, all, all of our other stuff. Then we'll have our new offerings as well. So, yeah, so a lot of new stuff. Nice. Uh, we've we've um, we've redesigned our booth and it's a new presentation. And so we're very excited. And, um, you know, if you remember um, from if you remember from um, last year at WonderCon, we were still in masks. If you remember, just the mask yeah. mandate was still going on. And uh, the, sh the WonderCon itself was still like it was kind of a diminished experience as a smaller version. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so super excited to kind of be back at really our first real WonderCon since 2019 to be fully back, all gears, you know, going. And uh, so, yeah, we're 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 super, super pumped. Awesome. So, now, Tony, I, gotta, I do have to say this, though, Tony, it's an older thing, but I do have the oh, know, yeah, you're a Batman, Batman yeah. shirt on right now. I yeah, love yeah, yeah. Thing. <laughs> uh well tony and i just realized i'm a doofus uh yeah. keep comic-con weird yes <clears throat> i'm a doofus we saw each other at la comic-con in december oh uh, yeah that's we, right we saw each other that's right um, for a hot second remember, that's right yeah and i remember that because um and and i can't remember i might have picked these up from you at san diego but um if you've seen me at a comic book convention you've seen my jacket with yeah. pins on it but uh, i do have yeah yeah you have them all there you right go there. Nice. yeah uh, the strange yeah. new worlds and the next right. generation and the voyager and beautiful yeah. that, well you you, know. you can uh add this one to it as well so oh i'm going to <laughs> oh, believe you me now tony just to really really quickly pimp your brand um hero within has done some really awesome stuff when you say like uh, uh stylish understated geeky uh wear um you've done this with uh you've done it with DC Comics, with mm. Marvel Comics, mm. with the Godzilla license, mm. uh, Star Trek, um, mm. and these are really, really cool clothes. Uh, as Jim, like you know, you see Jim, you see him. He's wearing just like a button-down short sleeve <laughs> uh, shirt. But when you look closer at it, you find wait, 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 the back. Look at the back. Can you see the back? Yeah. Um, the it, is, oh, there you can kind of see it yeah. a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. You see the design with my bald yeah. head above it. There you and go. So, yeah. For those of you out there who aren't familiar, um, it is really cool, stylish clothing with yeah. that geeky flair to it. And Tony, if if the folks out there who maybe don't live in Southern California or won't be able to make it to WonderCon, where can they find Hero Within online? Yeah, so you can uh, check us out on herewithinstore.com. And uh, everything that isn't sold at WonderCon will eventually make it on online in the following week. So you definitely can, you know, check that out. And then here within all, all the socials. And so we'll be posting all our updates and all the con happenings on Instagram and Twitter and, and all that good stuff as well. Yeah, you can see it down below. And then um, and also to pimp one more thing. We have a uh, panel on Friday uh, called How I Built This, which is kind of taking young content creators and artists and all that and, and basically sharing about their story and their experience and how they went from uh, amateur fan to professional and um, it's always a really inspirational time Love that. For, for yeah for young creators and so so that's Friday at 2 30 at room 300 C and so I'll be um, I'll be um, hosting that and it's a, always a great time so Check that out as well. And what booth number is it again Tony? That 918 so we're kind of at the front the main aisle, so you, you shouldn't have any problem finding us. Okay. Awesome. And we did last week when we talked about our favorite panels and, and things of that nature that we were looking forward to for WonderCon, we did mention your panel. 
uh, cool. with the uh, the room number and time as well. So if yeah. you didn't catch it in this show, you can probably just rewind like 20 seconds and, <laughs> and you know, hear it again. Or you can go back and listen to last week's Con Guy uh, podcast episode. Um, but yeah, Tony, thank you so much for being on the show today. I know your time yep. is very precious and yep. uh, you chose to spend some of that time with us. And that's always special for us. So thank you so much, Tony. Yeah. And we will see you uh, next week at WonderCon in Anaheim. Thank you. Tony, feel yeah. better, my friend. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. All right, man. I got I got to start my uh, my 10-minute journey to get up and try to leave yeah. the room. So. <laughs> get some heat and some ice. That's right. All right. All right. All right. Hey. Hey guys, love you guys, and it's not a con unless it's a you know a, a spending some time with the con guys. And so, thank you so much, and right. can't wait to see you guys at the show. See you there, Tony. See you later. Bye bye. All right, all right, all right. Always awesome to have Tony on the show. Um, Jim, should we? Is is Luke even here yet? Where is that guy? <laughs> well, actually, look at this. Look at this. Oh wait, he's oh, almost the there. He's oh look at there's his couch. Where is Luke? Hopefully we shall see. Where him. is Luke? <laughs> Where is Luke? Because we own oh, the couch with no cheese. <laughs> I know. I know. Because we do have there? some updates on the con guy panel. But while we're waiting for Luke, I, I let's go ahead and say hello to Hill um, Lily. So good Hilly. to see you, Lily. I, I, Hilly. And also uh, Mr. Jonathan Wilkinson. Good to see you. What's up, feller? Awesome to see you. And um, I know that. Then we have another one of our favorite vendors that is a friend of the show that I would love to, to give a shout out to if I could. Absolutely. Yeah, and that is Mr. Uh, Topher. I always get his last name wrong. It's Davila. It's Topher Davila. I am on a panel with him on on Sunday from four to five called Full Time Creative: How to Have a Full Time Creative Career on a Part Time Basis. It's a great thing. But it's a, it's kind of like what Tony was talking about, but like taking you know, people who want to have a full time creative career, how to s put your life together to make that happen. I know that Cheeseman is also going to be on a panel on Sunday right before that at four o'clock. No, his is at three o'clock about online branding, the importance of online branding. We'll let him talk about that. But Topher has a, a brand called Geekdom Wear. Well, look who has joined the party. I mean, who wouldn't want to be on a panel to put their life together like Jim just did? <laughs> Come so, to our panel. We'll tell you how to put your life together, you loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, Luke, we're talking about Geekdom Wear and Topher, Topher's panel. He's going to be, I mean, his um, booth, it's the Geekdom Wear booth. He's in booth 1700, booth 1700. He's got a great booth. As you are leaving the convention, He's going to be the guy that you're going to want to stop in and see. So his wife, her, her name is Jonelle Davis. She has chainmail jewelry, hundreds of earrings made from. They're all they're all handmade and each are very unique. They have a wide ranging of properties that uh, that you can love from generic themes like Halloween and books, but there's also dragon eggs, magic potion bottles, and a lot of along the fantasy decor. The other things besides chainmail. Is she has um, journals and patches and drink coasters and acrylic items, all with a fandom and geeky uh, theme to them. And one of the most customizable items that they're going to have is a build a bag combo. You start by selecting a tablet bag, a messenger bag, a backpack, or a haversack, and they come in a variety of colors. They're made of tough canvas. You can then decorate it with a range of enamel pins, metal tags, patches, icon plates. And pull tags that you choose from that come with the bag combo. You've ne and you know you've never got enough space for what you buy at a convention. So with this Geekdom Wear Build a Bag combo, you get a bag you can use immediately. And then not only a bag, but a bit of self-expression in regular life. Geekdom Wear booth 1700. It's located right up front, facing the front wall of the dealer's room. You can see it if you enter either from the center entrance and turn left. Or if you enter from the left entrance and turn right, it's very easy to find. Guys, go check out this booth. Topher is such a great guy. The thing is, the the vendor, there are certain vendors that I just really um, I'm drawn to because they're good people. Topher and his wife, they are good people. They've had a rough year with some family stuff, trying to get it all put together. But he has come out of it shining. And you'll see us at the booth. You'll see us at the panel at 5 o'clock on Sunday. And you'll also see Luke at a boot, not five o'clock, four o'clock for me, three o'clock for Cheeseman. 
And then um, go check out their booth, 1700. That's Geekdom Wear. And before we jump into too much, Luke, do you have an update on our panel? Or should we wait a second so you can get the, the graphic up here? Oh, by the way, Jonathan says, Luke! <laughs> <laughs> I finally made it. And I, gotta, I do have to say, Lily, our plan is, yes, to eventually post our panel online. But it's nothing like being there in person. If you can't be in there in person, we hope to have it online. But Ben is again hosting an awesome panel for us. Let's hear about it, guys. I'm what? <laughs> You're hosting an awesome panel for us. I, I know nothing of this. Yeah. <clears throat> Luke, no why question. don't you tell me? Well, I, I'm trying to find the gra- Did you Luke, not put a graphic on there, Jim? Oh, you act like I've had all the time in the world. No, I don't even know where the graphic is. <laughs> I'll I'll find everything that let's move on to a little bit uh let's yeah. let's discuss funko really quickly funko one of the largest collectible producers at any comic book convention that you go to across the world step right up welcome to the funko funhouse at wonder con 2023 enter a carnival like experience full of games giveaways and exclusive collectibles and we promise no spooky scary clowns <laughs> The WonderCon 2023 exclusives portal featuring Funko is now live. You must have a badge to participate. Uh, visit the Funko booth. Uh, visiting the Funko booth does not guarantee attendees any specific items at the Funko booth. And the items may sell out at any time patrons reach the front of the line. Or by the time patrons reach the front of the line. For those looking to purchase convention exclusives online through... Excuse me. I've been drinking too much fine A&W root beer. Uh... <laughs> Uh, through their website, please create your own login and Funko account ahead of time. Uh, and blah, 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 boilerplate, boilerplate. Uh, to include as many fans as possible in our virtual convention experience, this event is open to all account holders. You may enter a queue when you start the checkout process, allowing you to complete your order on a first-in, first-out basis. While shopping this event, there will be a limited up to one of each item per household for the first 24 hours. Items in your cart are not guaranteed for checkout. Inventory quantities are limited and will sell out quickly. For a smooth checkout experience, we recommend having your credit card and shipping information saved to your account, blah, blah, blah. If you have specific questions about Funko at WonderCon 2023, please reach out to us uh, via our social channels on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook with at Original Funko and hashtag WonderCon 2023. So what does this mean? It means Funko's <laughs> doing an online thing during WonderCon. Like, yeah. Are they, are, are yeah, they look, have... you, here's the here is the um the floor map, Ben. And if you look up in the right hand corner there, oh, there for, the, for those of you Funko. who are listening, we're showing a, a map of the floor. You see the Funko booth, they have a fun, it's the Funko, what are they calling it? And you the Funko step right up to the Funko Funhouse. Fun Funko Funhouse. Fun House. It's gonna be the biggest thing on the floor of which is not a big surprise. But just a cup, you know, and uh, I was able to grab just a few of the things that they'll be having. And it is cool that what you just said, they they have this gigantic presence on the WonderCon floor. But at the very same time, they're going to be having an, their own online convention at the same time. And some people would say, well, well, then they're not really exclusives if you don't have to be there. They're going to sell out. They only have a certain amount allotted. Some are a lot of people that you go through the Funko portal, the the um, exclusives portal for Porno. Portal of the what world. What happened at WonderCon this year? <laughs> uh, well, we're going back to the 70s now. Oh, but anyways, <laughs> no, they're going to have the exclusives portal. You, you register through there to register for a chance to get to go up to Funko and get your exclusives there. Or you can register with the online, create your own account on the online portal for um, Funko to have your, it sounds all ex crazy, but go to Funko.com and you can find out this. Here's a couple of things that Funko has. This I thought was super cool. This is Bugs Bunny dressed up like Superman in a soda pop can. <laughs> it's going to be kind of cool. This next item, this Funko Pop, I think this is going to be really kind of cool. Ben, do you see what this is? And why is this so kind of – why do you think this is going to be a big item? So we've got – we man, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. So we have uh, a Funko Pop here of Scroll uh mm. as iron man and uh we've got uh the secret invasion storyline coming up woo, woo. in the mcu uh which is uh it's it's a wild storyline it, it involves shapeshifters and morphers posing as your favorite superheroes and etc cetera, etc cetera. 
we don't know a lot about it yet, uh, apart from, you know, if you've read the comic book storyline. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, the movies and, and Marvel TV series uh, take a page from the comics and then they kind of do their own thing as well. So uh, really exciting, uh, really excited for that. And for this to be a WonderCon uh, convention exclusive um, means it's even more of a hot ticket item. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this pans out. But yes, this is scroll dressed as Iron Man. No, what if that's part is of that the a spoiler? Series? That it might be, cool. be. Who knows? I know. This also. We also have a pop vinyl of Disney's Hercules holding a <laughs> pop vinyl of Disney's Hercules. <laughs> Interesting. And then My just one more blown. Funko here. <laughs> yeah. It kind of has a. Oh, we have oh, Howlerette from uh, Moon, Moon Knight, Knight on Disney Plus. That's cool. That's fun. If any of you liked the hippopotamus goddess. <laughs> Uh, from Moon Knight on Disney Plus. Gosh, I liked that show a lot. I really did. Yeah. I really liked all of them. You know, a lot of people like to poop on Marvel shows or whatever. I, I still like it. I, I, I'm not suffering Marvel fatigue yet. So, and, the, uh, and that character is so funny. She's oh, she's so funny. Good. She's adorable. She's she's everything. She's yeah. everything, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Luke. How are we doing on this uh, uh, talking about our panel thing? Bum, ba, da, there we go. Oh my gosh, everybody. WonderCon 2023. TheConGuy.com presents 30 years, 30 freaking years of Power Rangers, a fan celebration, not to be confused with another panel called 30 Years of Power Rangers fan celebrate or something like that <laughs> but yes we are so stoked to have this panel of rangers ranging from all different uh, generations of power rangers uh we're having brennan mejia patrick david philip andrew peter peter sadarso uh roger velasco and abraham rodriguez now philip and patrick are new to our panels the other guys we've had on before um but i am excited uh, we've got different generations represented Power Rangers in space. There's Patrick David right there. And uh, all of these guys are going to be signing uh, at booth 1176 at various times. You can check that on our website yep. and social medias. Philip Andrew. Uh, we've got Brenda Mejia from Power Rangers Dino Charge. Peter Sidarso, Ninja Steel. Uh, Abraham Rodriguez from Beast Morphers. Uh, Roger Velasco uh, from Turbo and Power Rangers in space. Uh, and just... A fantastic group of individuals. Love all of those guys. There's a slight possibility we might have some other guests. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if I were a betting man, I might bet on it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you never know with a con guy panel, as we all witnessed at San Diego Comic Con 2022, all of a sudden, standing at the guest question microphone, was none other than Walter Jones, the original Black Power Ranger. So um, we had a lot of fun uh at that uh convention and we're looking we're looking to just up the ante every time we go to another convention with more power rangers bigger <laughs> better faster stronger we're gonna have 67 power rangers on our panel at san diego comic-con next year true just kidding it's um, gonna be like end game <clears throat> exactly rangers. they're all gonna you come out more? of portals that just open <laughs> yeah. up so I'll ben i think one strange. thing that's really important for everyone to know and we're gonna do our best to make sure you guys understand it. This particular panel is Sunday, 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 10, Sunday, Sunday, 1030 to 1130 room 300 C. The reason I'm saying that is because there is another power Rangers panel that I'm not discouraging you from going to that, <clears throat> get all the power Ranger love you can get. But um, that's a, that one's going to have a little bit of a different focus. It's more, you know, it's a historical panel, but it's uh, it will have some different Power Rangers. They're not. Um, it's a different group. Whereas our panel is going to be more kind of like a free willing interaction with the fans. The other panel is going to be a little bit more of a like a historical look at Power. Rangers. Both of them are going to be good. But I just want you to know, if you do go to the panel on Saturday, you have not gone to our panel. So make sure you put it on your calendar to make sure you hang out to Sunday and see the panel because we are going to have. An absolute blast. And again, our panel. Is it who are the Power Rangers you speak of? This is a new show. Brad, <laughs> Brad, 
Brad. <laughs> Sorry, just got home from the studio. Okay, fine. No. Uh, no. Jim, uh, yeah, we were going to do that on the show. Jim yeah, has an OnlyFans. Saving that, you're saving yeah. that for the end. That's the big, um, that's the big Yeah. One. No, but uh, yeah, Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. is going to be our Power Rangers panel. And in what room is that, Jim? Or 300C. 300C. 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. Why go to church when you could go to a Power Ranger panel? Take Come up and find me. I will pray with you. All right. We there you go. I'm a praying man. I go to church and I'm a, going to we'll start, we'll start the I'm panel with a prayer circle um, <laughs> and a couple of hymns. I'm bringing an organ. Right. Uh, oh, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> Old right. slow ones. Nearer mm -hmm. my God to thee. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun at that panel. We always have fun at our Power Ranger panels. And again, WonderCon is one of our most very favoritist uh, comic book conventions that we go to. Uh, it's it's San Diego Comic Con is in, I'll use the word again, incomparable. Um, but uh, outside of that untouchable bubble of San Diego, WonderCon is my absolute favorite convention to go to. And we always have fun with the Power Ranger panel at WonderCon pre-pandemic during the pandemic online and now that we're still technically in the pandemic but it's not quite as bad as it was but still sh you should be safe um so with that uh we are going to uh, kind of i'm going to throw it to cheese and uh jacobus system uh to tell us all of the wonderful things all the I, I just think of 1989's Batman when Jack Nicholson's Joker says, where does he get all those wonderful toys? And I want to hear about all the wonderful toys, guys. So please indulge me. Anyone? Did you guys have, <laughs> did you guys have any more um, exclusive pictures or anything for Funko? From, uh, for Funk? Uh, not yet, Jake. Just to let you know, the... Jake and Brad have been going back and forth on a text chain pretty much all week all about this stuff, and I have captured as many of those as possible. So yeah. what I'll do, Jake, is I can start yeah. right up top, and you uh, and Cheeseman and Brad can kind of take us through this. All right. Well, if you were a kid of the 80s like us, you know that, that iconic background means Masters of the Universe. So we have some really cool new figures coming from Mattel. Not only based on the newer show, Masters of the Universe Revelation, but we also have ones from uh, the uh, Classics line, which is like, oh, not Classic, or the Origins line, which is updated versions of the vintage figures with, that just add more articulation and make a more uh, modern action figure. So I don't know if, Luke, do you have pictures of those we can share? The Masters of the Universe? Yeah. The important question is, do they have Manny faces? <laughs> Manny faces. Yes, yes. He, was already, <laughs> he was already released, but now we're getting a new version of him. I believe that's more the, the color the paint scheme is more comic book accurate from like the little original mini comics. So that's the fun thing about these is that they'll make not only just like a, a figure based on the vintage figure, but also different versions we might have seen comic book versions or like. There's that um, series that came out in like 2002 that was the updated version of Master of the Universe. And they have those designs, but still kind of retain that that vintage 80s feel to them. Nice. So, yeah, a lot of really fun stuff. I know Brad has some comments here about uh, Manny Faces. Yeah, was it this post you sent like a while ago? Yeah. Or... Yeah, zoom in real quick. <laughs> yeah, that's cool how it's animating yeah. on their Instagram. Yeah, they have a lot of new stuff. I think it was just yesterday they just revealed this huge lineup that's coming out. And I'll pull it up. Yeah, and then that day everyone was texting me. All my other toy collectors were like, "Dude, did you see this? Did you see this?" And they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Yeah, Brad had some comments here. It says mini mini comic Manny faces with faces from the comic book and not the original toy. Yeah, so different versions of of yeah. There you go. Yeah, Brad's. Yeah, go to the go to other Brad's other comment there. Mattel literally rolled out a fall toy catalog poster today, like they did in the eighties. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, nice. so they they are very good at uh, keeping the fans happy, like the original fans of the old school stuff. Plus, you know, modern fans who are just now discovering it, and you know, making them also different figures that are more kid friendly. You know, even though it's all fun bright colored action figures and stuff so yeah those are new um 
Did you guys want to go into all those those Hasbro things I showed you now? Okay, there we go. So this is um, stuff that's just coming here pretty soon, probably the next couple month or so. Um, Hasbro is doing this new series called Indiana Jones Adventure Series. And these are six-inch figures based, obviously, on the Indiana Jones series, which we've never really gotten figures this scale before. We've had little three and three-quarter-inch scales back in the day. And then these are very much in the same vein as the uh, Hasbro Black Series Star Wars figures. So super detailed, super, you know, uh, articulated figures. There's Dr. Jones right there. His looks at, from Raiders of Lost Ark. There's Marion with the little. Yeah, the faces look amazing. Like the yeah. stuff on these. So hopefully, yeah, when they're at the stores, they look this good. It's not like yeah, it looks great. But, but can we go back to the Indiana Jones one real quick? Yeah. Can, is there a way to zoom in on his face? Because. Um, it doesn't okay. quite look like Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably, it'll take me a minute. Jim Ford. I think yeah, it, looks, worry about it. it looks better close, closer up, but yeah. yeah. Um, then the, there's some other figures there. They, I think, let's you okay, let's keep going. going. We'll yeah, go ahead. And oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Belak as the, the big final scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And the cool thing about these figures is that I don't know if you have a picture. Luke, do you have the picture of the the idol from the very beginning of the movie that the little gold head, you know, there you go. So, yeah. So this one, this comes with Indiana Jones and you see the idol in the middle there. And then the two angels on both sides. The cool thing about these, this set is that each figure comes with a different piece of the Ark of the covenant. So when you get them all, you can build it and it even comes with the, you know, the beams. So Indy and Sala can, you know, you can pose them holding it, lifting it up like this iconic scene from the movie. Yeah. But then you'd have to open the packaging, Jake. You would, you would. But do you have – that's the other thing I was going to talk about. I think I have pictures of the packaging. Did you guys post those too? This is we, kind of like, okay, here's the deal. Today. I had 50 pictures. I didn't. I wasn't able to post okay. all of them. <laughs> it's okay. No problem. Okay. Hasbro recently has moved to a plastic-free packaging. So instead of being able to see the figures through the window of the box, now it's just a cardboard box with a picture very similar to that of the figure on the – I know Brad's Brad's already going off about the the plastic free packaging. Um, it's been a very um, controversial move. So all the fans, part of the fun of collecting stuff is to keep in the package. You can have it on display, but now they're just selling boxes with pictures on them. You know, I'll and, grab one. Yeah. So um, Brad says ha Brad says Hasbro says they're going back to window boxes next year because of low sales. Yeah. So. It's I, as a lot of, ha having a lot of friends who are into the collecting uh, hobby. Every time we get together, someone's like, "Man, I hate these new packages. I hate how they've done this." And it's it is nice. I mean, it's I guess you know for the environmental reasons to yeah. have these less plastic. But it, yeah, see, so that's how the boxes look for these. Yeah, most uh, of these boxes don't end up in the ocean. People like hold these for like fifty right. years. And then but when then they again, die, like, they all go into the ocean. Right. <laughs> exactly. But like, if you collect stuff and have it on display in package, like that's just, it's not the same as being able to look and actually see the figure in the box. And also, because me, I like to open all the stuff. And the nice thing about having, you know, to see the figure is that you can see if they, you got like a bad paint job, if like an eye is off or something. Mm. Yeah. You know? So you might yeah, buy I it. definitely love it's to just, expect any figure I buy. Yeah, it's just a blind box. You open it up, and it's just like, man. But I guess they have. Oh, it's there it for is. Ben. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice little close. Oh, looks Jim like Harrison Jim. Ford's uglier cousin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Yeah. But there's the, the original lineup. I think they're releasing is all the. Was it, oh, what did Brad say? Sorry, sorry. Wrong comment. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah. So this first lineup has all the figures from Raiders. And then they've also released a couple pictures from. These, these figures. Sorry. <laughs> um, they also have a couple of um, Last Crusade coming out. A couple of figures. I don't know if you guys got those. Got was those that this one? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. Yeah. And then they have. Because uh, this. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but describe what we're looking at. So we this. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, for, I forget the guy's. The act, the, the character's name. Is it uh, the guy. The, the villain from uh, The Last Crusade. The guy who turns at, at, at the end, you find out he's actually a Nazi at the end. And then Admiral he, Piet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say, this is this is actually his second action figure from Hasbro because he had an Empire Strikes Back figure. 
Um, if he yeah. gets the Game of Thrones action figure, he'll have the trifecta. Oh, you're right. The nice. dude, yeah, with the beard and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so this is fun. They've, they've been, you know, adding extra things. Like you have the removable heads you can put on when he drinks from the, the cup. What is happening? And you're like, uh, you know. <laughs> this is because we're looking at the figure where his face starts getting all. Yeah, he, he oh, ages yeah. a whole wow. lifetime in like a matter of like five seconds. That's crazy. So Do you Jake, think you're going to buy all these, Jake? Yeah. No, I already I pre-ordered the indie figure so far, and okay. um, it just depends if I if I see him in pack and see him in store. But again, I won't actually see how they look until I watch like video reviews of them and stuff. So are there multiple my, indies, or they're just one with kind of the accessories? There's they've they have the Raiders indie, just the classic, you know, mm-hmm. leather jacket and stuff, and then they have a Professor Jones figure. I think it's his look from. Um, one of the scenes from either Raiders or Last Crusade, where he's got the glasses and he has like a book and stuff. It's the third. It's a uh, Last Crusade. Last Crusade. Okay. And then I'm assuming they're gonna do a, I guess you call it like a battle battle version of Indy and from Temple of Doom, where he's got like the you know ripped sleeve and all that stuff. It's, so, it's um, when we first met Ben. Ben was dressed yeah. up. Oh like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ben's so that just seems like a obvious one they'll do. I'm sure down at some point. I mean, Oscar winner short round. I mean, yep. come on. They got to do a short round, like two pack or something. So we'll see. Sean Connery Jr. Yeah. I don't know if they, <laughs> I, I don't know. Some actors I know still have weird license stuff where I don't know if his estate family, whatever, would still grant them the likeness to make it a figure of him. So there are things like that, but the uh, Jim, did you happen to get those retro indie figure? One picture? second, one second. I want to. Okay. Sorry, I'm loading and okay. I think I do have one of them. Is that this one? No. What no, is that, that's really cool though too. So they, they've also not just the action figures. They have. They're they're starting to branch off and do um, almost like like prop replicas mm-hmm. so that's the staff of raw headpiece that he puts in the, in the the light shines through and it shows where they find the arc mm-hmm. um yeah that's like a pretty detailed uh replica of that piece so that's another fun thing they're doing because I, I didn't get all the pieces in but there's little pieces where you plug them into the ground and, and, yeah. and different things to really make that work yeah yeah a lot of cool stuff i'm sure we'll eventually they'll do the idol you know from the beginning of raiders of the lost ark and you were wow. talking about Professor Jones. I think this yeah, is Professor there you Jones. Go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that, I think that's him. Yeah, because he's holding his uh, his dad's book there. His dad's. Yeah. Can't wait to play with that one. <laughs> I put it in my diary, so I wouldn't have to remember. <laughs> so Jake, what what is this right here? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't put that one. Luke did. I think that's a. Oh. It looks like a pin or something. That's pretty cool, though. It's like a Indiana Jones. Fortune says, and glory. Fortune and glory pin with the hat. Fortune and glory was what he was a, the theme. The, the tagline from the second one um, temple of doom yeah. temple of doom yeah fortune and glory kid all right so we'll keep <laughs> we'll keep going on let me see i don't know what this is oh that's yeah. i that's i actually got that's a sergeant slaughter figure i got from, <laughs> from hasbro because from the gi joe line and i was showing it that it's cool that they upped the scale for that figure a little bit because if you know the whole history of sergeant slaughter he was a wwf wrestler and then he made the jump to Hasbro and was a part of the GI Joe cartoon and stuff. So it's cool that they made him to scale. So if you wanted to display him with like wrestling figures is actually the correct height. So that was a fun thing I was, I was posting about. Let me check the comments real quick to see if Brad says, okay, Brad does say Hasbro says they're going back to the window boxes next year because of low sales. And then I'm not going to say that next one. And then (laughs) was Walmart con this last weekend, the online exclusive sales thing. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. Walmart still gets a lot of exclusives through a bunch of different brands. Um, It's again, it's kind of a controversial thing because Walmart has in the last year, couple of years has been pretty notorious for not doing a great job at keeping like pre-orders and stuff. People will make all these orders and then all of a sudden things get canceled so I just feel like every couple months, it's just through the collector community, people posting like, that's it. I'm done with Walmart. I'm, like this is, but then it's like, why is it every time they do an exclusive, it always has to be Walmart. Why can't they pick another uh, store retailer. or yeah, retailer? So that's, well, you know, that's what we get for uh, allowing Toys R Us, KB Toys and all the great toy stores to go under. Yeah. But anyways, 
Hey, wow. and, and before we move into the next section that you're showing us, Jake, the 40th anniversary section of something I'm really excited about, um, can, I just want to make sure that we hit Brad's comments up here. He says there's a new Manny Faces that came out today. Yeah, I think that's the – is that, Brad, is that the comic color version? Yeah. Yep. Yep, okay. Okay, yo, I guess you guys already talked about that. And then he said <laughs> – you guys talked about Flocked Moss Man? Oh, Yeah. So What's Moss that? Man was a figure. Moss Man was a Masters of the Universe figure, who it, it really it's just a, another character, Beast Man. But they, this is the fun thing about '80s toys and a lot of stuff. They would take a figure and then just kind of change things up, change the paint scheme, and create a new character. So there was this character called Beast Man, and then they took him and then they put this like this like flocked fuzzy green material over him, and then they're like, now he's Moss Man, and he's a good guy. <laughs> so it's like a totally different character, but it's the same thing. So. Hey Luke, can you take Jake through the the one, two, three, four, five, the the colorful next five um, figures? I'm gonna see if I can find Flossman. Flo what's it yeah, called? Flossman. Floss what's his name? Floss Floss Man. Floss Man. Floss Man. Cue the Star Floss Wars music. Go ahead. Dun dun dun. Oh, this is Star Wars. Okay, so Hasbro to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi um, are re-releasing these retro style or they're releasing these retro style figures based on the original action figures from 1983. What a crappy looking toy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at hey, that. That's, hey, that's the best you got back then. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, it's mostly, I don't know if you guys have the pictures of them on card too. Um, it's a, uh, yeah, it's just total nostalgia. There's uh, the first one we had was Jedi Luke. And then there's uh yep. There you go. Emperor. Palpatine, classic, super simple toy. There's Han Solo in his Endor jacket. Looks just like him. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ben. You were complaining earlier. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. This, oh, this is perfect. How this far we've come. He looks like John Goodman on this one. <laughs> the John Goodman Han Solo. <laughs> is Leia as the bounty hunter? I, is it Bausch or Bosch or Bosch or something like that? Bosch. Bosch. Yeah. Chris Bosch. Yep, there's Lando in the in the skiff guard disguise. And these were all figures they had before, like in the mm -hmm. past? Same mold, same designs. They've just re-released them. And um, mm. they, even the card backs look the same, but they put a big – that sticker down the corner says retro. They put that mm -hmm. on there just so people don't confuse them with the actual figures from 1983. Yeah. And they purposefully designed the cards to look kind of like beat up and weathered and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. Now is it just those five, or is there like a whole series of? There was there was a couple more. I think I sent. I know they do like a. They're doing um, uh, the biker scout one, okay. and oh man, yeah, it's not it's not the full line. They just kind of did like a like a best of. Yeah, it's like five or six or seven or so. Yeah, um, and just so you guys know, Jake did send um, quite a few. I just didn't. I got off my day job around 5.30 or 6 and have time to update. Get your all. life together, Jim. I'm Come sorry. on. There's a lot. <laughs> I, I, I did. hear there's a panel at WonderCon for that. <laughs> That's right. But, Jake, I did. I was able to upload this one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, so that's That's Moss Man. <laughs> the Masters of the Universe Origins line. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, crazy. Do you I think have the original one, it, it, was, it, wasn't only, it wasn't only that it was fuzzy. He also they put, like, a scent to him. So I think he smelled really strong of, like, pine. Because I think his character is supposed to be like a woods guy or whatever, almost like a swamp thing kind of dude, but like in the in the woods. So he's like a scratch and sniff. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Smelly toys. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's, floss man. There's floss. actually a new one. I'm gonna upload him right now that Brad just sent to us. But um, while I'm doing that, because it, you know, it's not immediate here. While I'm doing that, Jake, do you have anything else? We weren't able to get everything on today, but anything else that we uh, that's interesting? Any new toys, new collectible? Wait, wait. Here's, I guess this is the new one. Yeah, that's, that's the cool. new one that's coming out. And it, yeah, if you if you were to see the original side by side, it's pretty pretty spot on, like recreation, but way more mobility. The arms move, and you can bend the elbows and the wrists and all that stuff. So. Just updating it, making it more modern, but still keeping that similar. Uh, Wait, look, Brad design. said the original was scented. Yeah, it had like a That's pine. Jake just said. Pine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not listening while I'm searching for pictures. So sorry. <laughs> wait, 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 I mean, there's always good stuff. Like there's always good reveals. We just a Stink lot or. of those ones were from yesterday. <laughs> Stinkor, yeah, Stinkor was the the one that had a scent. It would look the character looks like a skunk. He's got the white stripe. 
right down his head. And I think it was just, they just, they mixed like patchouli scent into the plastic when they made it. So then, but then they, you know, when they uh, originally released it, the, the packages said like, figure has scent. It's fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think at the end of the production line, uh, there was just one guy there who would rub each action figure on his butt <laughs> before putting it in the package. That's, you know, just to give us how they did that. <laughs> But yeah, there's always good stuff. Just follow, you know, Hasbro, follow Mattel. They're always doing releases. Super 7 is awesome. NECA is an amazing company that's always doing really good, uh, you know, film stuff. They've, uh, what did Brad say? Stinkor, Stinkor apparently. Do that Stinkor, work. yeah. He says stink. Stunk up the Mattel factory so bad the employees had to wear masks for months. <laughs> 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 oh, the good old days. The oh, good old days of smelly toys. <laughs> but Jake, you do have one last bit of coolness to show us, right? Yeah. So do you have or you tell me the video from my buddy Tom? Okay, so my buddy Tom, who's a big collector and into all kinds of stuff, but a huge Star Wars fan as well. And what's Star last, Wars? Star Wars, yeah. So over the last uh, did I say Star Wars? <laughs> no, I said what Star Wars? Oh, what Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a little project. What's this war in the stars. It's a little project. It's just picking up. You get you just you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, he for the last I don't know a couple of months he's been working on this room in his basement that he totally has made into a Star Wars themed room. So uh, I filmed his big reveal when he showed us the room. So if you guys want to play that video, all right. Roll go. that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. Roll it again. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> That's so great. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You've got cutouts and everything. And a- oh, wow. So this begins. So I, I thought I would have all of my ships hung by. Yeah, that's there's that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you got the other one, but he did a really cool thing with the ceiling. He painted it all black, and he said he's going to use some kind of projector to have it look like all you know space and stuff. But at the front door, when you're when you're in the room looking back towards the door, he hung um, X-wing and the Tie Fighters. So then he and he painted the walls. So when you stand in one specific point, it perspective it looks like they're going down the trench so it's like the top and then he's going to add on the walls he's going to add texture to make it look like the death star uh (laughs) walls and he's going to do it the same way that they actually built the original sets and props he just he's like i'm just going to take all these like random model pieces and stuff he's just going to keep building it yeah exactly a kit bashing and put it up there and just like spray paint it and it's going to just give that 3d effect so yeah, super cool. Well, somebody grab some peanut butter because I'm jelly. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're getting there, Ben. Yep. I'm I I have a little bit more of diverse diversification diversity because I've got yeah. Star Wars and then I've got Batman and Jaws and Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. and all that stuff. So that's how I am too. It's just a mix of everything, but mm-hmm. I definitely have a good. A lot of stuff is Star Wars down here. Just <laughs> so NECA is not doing anything for WonderCon as far as you know, right? No, they don't have anything. Like I feel like the WonderCon exclusives are more, you know, it's more stuff like pins or the, posters. Oh, sorry. Right where you're standing. Oh, oh yeah. There's the go. perfect perspective for this. Oh, yeah, check this out. Oh, yeah. Isn't that crazy? I, it took me like oh, that's cool. hours oh. to, do this, <laughs> to make that perfect perspective. You see how all the lines go straight yeah. in a 3D dimension right there? Nice. It was insane, man. Yeah. You could just so like lay on the floor and look up at those probably. So, yeah. you, um, you probably will sleep in there. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean for that to play right then. I was just oh, looking and it started playing. Oh, no, that's, yeah. So, yeah. Star Wars. Look, what were you saying? So NECA doesn't look like they're, they're having – Who's NECA. kind of likes, in your opinion, Jake, did you see – who's like kind of – laying off staying out of the WonderCon exclusive no it, no offense to one to WonderCon because it is a great convention but yeah. it's not it's not as obviously it's not as big as san diego so i think a lot of companies save their big exclusives for that and yeah. WonderCon, i feel like a lot of the exclusives are more you know like pins or 
posters, artwork, stuff yep. like that. And, but Funko will do that. But I think just Funko just makes so much stuff that they're just like, yeah, yeah. throw them, throw them some of these. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they just had to dump a bunch of it. In a, exactly. Yeah. Just spray, just spray yeah. paint them, and then dump yeah. them in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they dump them in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Funko they, did not dump a bunch of toys into the ocean. Just yeah. be clear that yeah. we know of. Right. Nor so will Hero Within ever dump their pens in the ocean. Oh, no, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs> right. But yeah. I'm excited to see where they're coming. Uh, the only exclusives. The only, the only the exclusives, exclusives that I ever see at WonderCon are those stupid mystery boxes that look like Super Mario cubes and stuff. <laughs> I've seen some Back to the Future Jurassic Park stuff, but yeah. I've never bought one of them though. Right. No, I th and a lot of those companies, like, you know, they will have exclusives. Like, I bought that NECA uh, Ninja Turtle. Uh, they're right there. The 1990 Ninja Turtle figures, that four pack mm -hmm. that they released. But then they, they, yeah, you can kind of see them in there. There's the whole thing. Yeah. But the Turtles, they released a four pack in the big box, it looked like a VHS box. And that was the exclusive for 2018. But then I think the next year they released them all individually, like the exact same figures. So it's like, it's cool that they had that as an exclusive, that box, but the figures themselves weren't necessarily like that different than what they just released. Yeah. Now they do do stuff like repaints, different versions. Like I have a, a Predator 2 figure that was only available from San Diego Comic-Con, which is um, his, he's like half invisible, but it's like when the scene, uh, when the predators, when he's like in the alleyway and he's in the water and all the electricity is going around. So it's like partially clear, partially blue with like the electric mm -hmm. stuff. So that kind of stuff, super cool. But again, they, they save it for the big stuff, big, uh, festivals or not festival conventions, the big shows. Yeah. 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 And WonderCon's a big show too, but it's just not on the yeah. level as those ones. Even if they don't come do a booth, Mattel, Hasbro, et cetera, should send someone to at least do a panel and announce things or show some of the big stuff they announced the last few days. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like, yeah, tease it more, even if they don't have like the actual figures like they do it, you know, because they'll tease a lot of stuff at Comic-Con, but they could do like some cardboard type stuff on the floor, right. different things to be like, come to San Diego. We're going to be showing these things. <clears throat> you see a lot of that is definitely the place to hunt for vintage toys, says right. Brad. Super mm -hmm. Seven does always attend and bring some cool things, but not like SDCC by far. Right. Yeah. Because Super Seven has their own store there, which is always pretty yeah. cool. Usually, Jake, you you usually always get something from there. Super Seven is awesome. They just they keep knocking it out of the park with so many different uh, fran you know franchises and licenses they've been getting. They have this line of figures called the Ultimates, where they're you know recreating like they have. Um, a line called the Ninja Turtles Ultimate Figures, where they took the original designs, the Playmates toys, like the vintage action figures, and then they just like upgraded them. So they made them bigger, added more articulation, but the look still is the same, like the same face design and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like just the, they know their audience, you know, they know what people will go crazy about and want to get more than some, more than some companies, you know, I guess. <laughs> but Super 7, yeah, yeah. as good as they are, they they do have their uh, I guess critiques. People are saying like some of the the, uh, the quality control issues aren't up to par as some companies, but yeah. I love it. Do they do more of a limited run on things too? So it's not you know as you know. So it makes stuff feel like oh I need to get it quickly because it may. Yeah, yeah. Me. They're also kind of they also are kind of notorious of doing a lot of re-releases and you know here's another release of this. I forget what. Like, you know, they have, they, they have the rights to do Universal Monsters and they've released those figures so many times. They've released like the original designs, color versions, black and white versions, glow in the dark versions and stuff. So it just depends on what you yeah. what you're looking for. If you really like. Yeah, yeah so that's exactly that was, those things. Yeah, yeah that was a um, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they just I feel like every year they like, here's another version. And you're just like, oh, OK, but they, we base this design off some, you know, vintage figure that came out in the 80s or something and yeah. it's on the package look like that so speaking yeah. of universal monsters NECA's really killing it with the universal monsters yeah i'm trying to get those as they come out you know i got Frankenstein, yeah. wolfman and i definitely want to get creature and i should have i should have shared some pictures looks too. really cool i should have shared some pictures too because uh NECA is doing a really fun crossover with teenage mutant ninja turtles and universal monsters 
and they're combining the characters. So they'll have like Raphael as the Frankenstein monster and they'll have nice. Michelangelo as the mummy. And I think it's like Don Donatello as I the think they movie. did this back in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. They? Yeah. 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 It's a tribute to that, but they're like super detailed, like nice, amazing looking. And they have other characters. They're, they made up new versions of it. They have splinter as uh, Van Helsing. So he's got like a hat and like a bag with like stakes in him and stuff for like vampire hunting. And they have, uh, they're doing a Casey Jones figure who's like the fan of the opera. Hmm. Nice. So, yeah. And that makes April, sense. Yeah. April O'Neil is like the bride of Frankenstein. And yeah, a lot of fun stuff. Very, uh, very uh, clever. Nice. Well, yeah, fellas. You can look those up online. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, fellas, I think it's time to about wrap up. Uh, our podcast for the night. Uh, so any uh, any final pitches for the collectibles that we can be looking for either online or at WonderCon in person? Cheese? I'd just be watching, you know, the pages of, you know, the places that Jake has suggested because stuff could just pop up or sales online or, you know, being there is always preferred, you know? So yeah. you can kind of see stuff, but you never know stuff could pop up online or, and then sell out quickly. So just be aware of these sites and these things and just keep, keep an eye on the site. And that's, and that's stuff like NECA, Super 7, Mattel, Hasbro. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of great um, Instagram uh, accounts. Like I follow this one called Yak, Yak Face, which is a Star Wars um, account. And they're always posting news and like they find stuff out as, as soon as the news drops. They're the first ones to post it. So I follow them and see all these reveals and, and whatnot. So that's always good to keep up with that. And um, as far as WonderCon goes about finding cool stuff, it's like Brad said in the comic comments. It's um, it's for me. It's more about just walking the the floor, looking at all the vendors, finding cool stuff, seeing things that you hadn't seen in forever, or a toy you had when you were a kid, and like, oh my gosh, I used to have this, or you know, seeing the stuff that you didn't even know about. Like, well, I didn't know they made these toys. This is really cool. Or, you know. Well, that's how it's underneath the Con Guy logo right now. But that's how last year at San Diego Comic-Con, I got the um, original uh, Power Ranger swords, the ones that all fit together and build into the Megazord. It was a vintage toy. And uh, I'd been wanting it since I was, you know, 10 years old. Yeah. And now I'm an adult with adult money, so I buy toys. <laughs> there you go. So do I. <laughs> we all do. 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 All right. <laughs> well, uh, and on that note, if you are going to be in Southern California this coming weekend of uh, March 24, 25, and 26, 2023, excuse me, stop by the anaheim convention center are i don't know are, are there still badges available jim do we know if that's a thing yes Single there are, badges still, are still available there are still badges available mm -hmm. for wondercon anaheim so if you are going to be in the area this coming weekend uh hop on to the san diego comic-con website go to the wondercon section and get yourself a badge uh it is always a good time as i mentioned in the last show it's the it's the convention where i met my wife uh, it's, uh, and it's also just, it's, it's San Diego Comic-Con light. It's, it's got a lot of the same stuff that you would find at San Diego Comic-Con, maybe not some of the biggest things, but it's got the same energy, the same feeling. It's a little less crowded. And, uh, I like the last comment that Brad just posted. He said, WonderCon is the convention to collect people, not toys. And I have made so many friends through, uh, going to WonderCon Anaheim. So <laughs> Uh, I'm really uh, uh, grateful for that as well. Um, so with that being said, thank you all so much for watching the Con Guy show tonight. Uh, Cheeseman, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Cheese on Couch and also the conguy.com and most importantly at WonderCon. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Jake, where can people find you if they want to keep up on all of your toy shenanigans? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at the Jacoba System. The Jacoba System. And one last thing, of course, this coming Sunday, uh, March Sunday, 26th. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning, March 26th at 10.30 a.m. in room 300C. The conguy.com is presenting 
30 years of Power Rangers, a fan celebration with our at least six Power Rangers uh, on our panel that will be there uh, to talk about their experience being Rangers and answer some of your questions. Uh, I'm going to be there too. Uh, but uh, Jim, did you want to pimp yourself before we get off the show? Oh, I was... Boop, boop. I'm not the biggest uh, person that's an expert on uh, collectibles, so I was leaving it to you guys being the experts. But uh, you can find me. I will be there. You can also follow me at James D. Fry on Instagram. All right. And uh, I do want to do a quick shout out to uh, our host channel, uh, that hashtag show, uh, as well as their sponsor, uh, Neft Vodka, reminding you to always drink responsibly. Thank you all so much uh, for letting us broadcast our weird convention show on your network as well as well i guess it'll tell you in the ending uh in the little ending theme music uh where you can find us online as well uh with that being said my name is ben cleaver uh you can find me on uh all social media at b-e-n-k-l-i-e-w-e-r or you can search the hashtag bk421 and uh you know people ask me why am i always drinking out of this red cup well it's because whenever ben cleaver shows up it's always a party good night everybody Thanks for listening to The Con Guy Show, the official program of theconguy.com. Find us on the Weeby Geeks Collective or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And now on sci-fi.radio, Saturdays at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific, both a.m. and p.m. That's 9 o'clock Greenwich. It's sci-fi for your Wi-Fi.